Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see everyone here in the house of the Lord today. I'm glad you're here with us. Um, don't forget that uh, uh, we've got a potluck today. We're going to announce that a little bit later on as well. So uh, um, good to see you. You're wondering, why are you up here today? Well, the reason I'm up here, uh, Garrett Rowland is going to be speaking today because he's going to do the second part of Rooted. We'd really love, even if you're not a member of the church, we'd love everyone to get involved and rooted, if you would. Tonight, we're going to have our, um, um, I guess he'll talk more about that later, but uh, we'd love for you to sign up and be a part of the rooted uh, experience with us here today. So, all right, we're going to start with announcements. Today, at, right after this service, there is a potluck. Where is Brad? Is Brad here? Brad. Brad Cox. Brad's not here today, is he? He's downstairs? All right. Well, I was asked, Lucas, are you staying for the potluck today? Not today. Brad's broke your heart so many times, making you go last. Always makes you go last. All right. All right. So I'll, I'll save that joke for later. Board meeting at 1 o'clock today. Rooted small group kickoff is tonight at 6.30. There is desserts. So bring a dessert with you when you come. Peach cobbler is a dessert. It's a dessert that God loves. Uh, junior youth group, junior high is on Wednesdays at 6.15. High school youth group, Sunday night at 5 o'clock. They meet down at the Rock. Starts tonight. Meet high school. You all going? All going? All going? All going? Anybody still wake up? Okay, never mind. All right, Wednesday evening is Awanas. Uh, 6.10 to uh, 8 o'clock, doors open at uh, 6.05. If you have any questions about Awanas, uh, talk to Julie Douglas. All right, next Sunday is Comeback Sunday. How many of you have a friend that's not going to church right now? How many of you have a friend? Let's start there. All right, invite them to come with you to the church next week and then take them out to eat somewhere. We've got all these wonderful restaurants like Casey's and Love's and places like that. All right. Um, <clears throat> church vote is also next week for elders and deacons and trustees. All right, do we, if you've not been coming to Sunday school, Sunday school is at 945, and we've got two adult classes going on, but we have classes for all ages. So bring your little kids, get a cup of coffee, and go to class. We have the book of Acts, the second half, and 1 Corinthians uh, going on. Uh, welcome to Norton. If you'd like to know more about the church or becoming more involved in the church or joining the church, uh, September 25th during Sunday school, there's a Welcome to Norton class. Uh, man camp. Uh, Ryan Cox, uh, we went last year to a man camp, and uh, he is an OU fan, so we've had to instruct him on what being a man is. Um, <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, he's going to be uh, leading a uh, man camp. If you'd like to get involved in that, uh, talk to Ryan Cox, but also we'd love for you to sign up, and uh, it's going to be out at the lake, October 7th and 8th. Uh, let's pack the bus. This is the, o, uh, the Operation Christmas Child uh, needs uh, for this month. Scripture reading, if you would please stand as we go to the reading of God's Word. It's Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the steps with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on that law both day and night. That person is like a tree planted by the streams of the living waters, which yields its fruits in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever that person does will prosper. And all God's people said... Go and greet somebody's hand today as we get ready to enter God's time of worship.
Well, good morning, everybody. It is a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, I remember whenever I would shake my brother Brand's hand, and he's, he's the older one there, I would grab his hand, and sometimes he would take one of those fingers and tickle my finger. Uh, yes, I think that's the point. Yeah, it's hilarious. Well, I say, let's continue our time to worship together. Please remain standing if you're able. Join us, church. Praise. Jesus is my Savior, my Savior, my Savior.
this morning. Some of us are coming in those doors broken. Some of us are coming in hurting. Some of us are coming in in the valleys. And some of us are coming in on the mountaintops. Father God, I just pray this morning that we raise our voices to you regardless of where we're at. That our praise be in worship to you with smiles on our faces or tears coming down our cheeks. Father God, I just pray that you get all the glory this morning. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.
praise God. You guys may be seated for communion. Good morning. I can remember it just like it was yesterday. I was driving an 808070 John Deere tractor. I was about 100 yards off of road W6 out in the field. I was only about three terraces from the north end of the field I was in. I was pulling a sweeps. And I was getting this field prepared to drill back to wheat in about, in about a couple weeks from that time. I was listening to my favorite radio station, farm station, KRVN at the time. And there was announcement came over the radio saying that this plane had flown into a building in New York City, one of the Twin Towers. And I was just like a little confused. I thought, what was wrong with that pilot? Was it foggy? Why did you get lost? Did you have a heart attack? I was just playing it over and over in my mind. Why would a plane fly into that building? It wasn't very long after that, they came over the radio, another announcement, another plane. And they weren't saying jets, they were just saying planes had flown into the other tower. That, it was just so confusing to me, I was just trying to picture that. I had too much work to do, I wanted to run home and turn on the TV and see what was going on. I stayed in the tractor. It was still about mid-morning, and then another announcement came over. Pretty soon this was all that was on the radio, that one of the towers had fallen. And I was just, how, how can that be? It was so, so confusing. And then another, pretty soon they said the second one had fallen. And you know, I guess... I just couldn't comprehend that. And 2,000 miles away, far from civilization, from a big crowded city, I, maybe you all felt that same way, but it just stuck to me 21 years ago, and I, I still remember it, like I said, just like yesterday. There are things in the Bible that happen too that probably feel you don't understand it. I wonder how the shepherds out in the field watching their flock that night when the angels appeared to them. That would have been really confusing. And telling them that, telling them about the birth of Jesus. I imagine they remembered that their whole life. That is something they can never forget. And maybe they felt that way again 30-some years later. And they remembered that little baby that they'd gone into Bethlehem to see. And now he was hung on a cross and died. Just some things you would never forget. There's another event. And I hope none of us, I hope everyone in this room never has to sit back and think about it and go, I remember when that happened. There's an event that occurs in the Bible called the rapture. And I'd like to read out of Matthew 24, verse 36. And it says, about that day or hour, No one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. 
For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill, one will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know what day your Lord will come. So when that happens, I don't want to be in my field, and I'm going to use Dan Skirtland as an example. I farm on the south side of the road, he farms on the north side of the road. I don't want to be there picking corn one day and look across the road and start scratching my head saying, what's Dan doing? That combine is just wandering aimlessly across the field. What's Colby doing? He's in that grain cart. That grain cart is driving across the rows of tractor, headed the other, across the rows of corn, knocking them down, going the wrong way. What's Elaine doing? Her truck just drove into the ditch. I don't want to be that one that there's been stories, there's been movies, there's been books written about it. Use your imagination. What would it be like? The rapture occurs. A lot of the people around you disappear. And you're left. That would be another experience that you would probably remember the rest of your tribulated life. The word goes on in Matthew, understand this, if the owner of the house had known what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready because the son of man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you so much. We thank you what you've done for us. Thank you for what you've done at the cross as we remember that soon and taking these emblems. Help us to be ready, Father. Help us anxiously await and watch for you and be on our guard and waiting for your second coming. Lord, again, thank you for your life, your death, and your resurrection. In your name I pray. Amen.
Will you join me in praying for the offering? Lord Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you for all the blessings that you pour out on us, Lord. I just thank you for this church that we can come here and worship you, Lord. And I just pray that you'll bless this offering and use it to further your kingdom. And pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello? All right, there we go. Carolyn can hear me, so you can all hear me. <laughs> all right, it's time to dismiss for Kids Quest and uh, extended session. Um, so if you're first through third grade, I believe, you can go downstairs and uh, kindergarten through third grade, and there's uh, toddlers and little tykes out this direction. Um, Justin, let me remind you that high school youth group will start tonight at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, 5.30. 5, okay, at the Rock. And uh, they had uh, close to 30 kids show up for junior high the other night, so that's awesome. Um, our youth are very involved, and uh, we're very thankful. All right, so, um, man, it's good to see you guys today. Um, I'm really excited about what we get to do in the next few weeks. Um, and for those of you that maybe not have any idea what we're talking about, we're going to be going through a series called Rooted as a church. Um, and Nate's going to be doing the messages every week based on uh, what we're talking about uh, in our groups each week. There's days of devotionals. Uh, the devotionals are really short, so don't worry about it. Uh, and uh, then you'll meet together your group and talk about it. And uh, Nate will preach on Sunday about the topics we're talking about. But he asked me today to, to go through each of the 10 weeks briefly. I'll try. I looked. The Chiefs don't kick off till 3, okay? So we're good. Uh, the Broncos are Monday night, so we're all right. Um, but uh, I, wa- I wanted to just give you a brief look into what we're going to be doing, because I'm really excited about this, because we've gone through this before. Um, You know, I want to talk about a little bit what it is. I'll turn on my clicker here real quick. Um, There we go. Um, When I I was looking at stuff, when I first started this job, I was looking for different ways to kind of help people figure out what their journey is, uh, and how to to get deeper in their faith, and, and to be disciple makers. And, uh, and so I found this program called Rooted. There's a, a group of ministers that I work with from Nebraska that do the same thing that I do. And uh, one of the guys, Nick Sean Lau from uh, Third City Christian Church in uh, Grand Island, was doing this. And I'm like, hey, what's this Rooted thing you're doing? And he said, it's, it's the single greatest thing our church has ever done. And I said, oh, okay, well, tell me more about it. And so uh, I, I researched it. I called the people at Rooted. They said, hey, Pilot it with your leadership. You guys do it together, and if you like it, do it. If you, you don't, you know, and that's, that's always great. Hey, do it. We want you to do it first. And so we did with the elders uh, and the wives, their wives, last spring, and it was great, okay? It's great whether you're, you're a new believer or whether you've been a believer for years. Um, and that's really why, let's talk about what it is. That's why we're doing it, because... Uh, we're a community here. We're a church. We're, we're, we're a group of believers that do stuff together, and that's the way God intended it to be. And if, if you're a new believer, sometimes you're like, you know, I, I want to do stuff in the church. I want to know God. I want to do this and that. Well, you just don't know where to start. Um, and this is a great place to start. Uh, I, I, was, I started grad school this week, and one of my professors, the first thing he said, he goes, Vince Lombardi, uh, he said every time he would have, every year, his Super Bowl winning coach, they named it the trophy after him, right? Uh, every year he starts the first meeting with, this is a football. Um, it was simple. He said John Wooden would start practices by everybody taking off their shoes and socks, and you put on your socks and shoes first before you learn how to play basketball. I remember, for those of you that played for Coach Cortese, tuck in your shirt uh, is the thing he'd always have us do. And I'm, I don't know why. He taught us about golf, but not about football. Um, anyway... Uh, we got to start somewhere. And, uh, and so it's really cool that we have people that are a little further down the road than others and those that aren't, but we're all going to do it together. And we're all going to learn together and do this together. And I think the youth is going to do it. Um, so we're really excited. So what, what are we going to be doing? Um, we're going to be doing three things. We're going to connect. We're going to have you connect with God, with the church, and with your purpose. Okay, we're doing this together. We need to connect with all three of those things. And that's really what Rooted is about, is finding your rhythm in those three things. Um, so I'm going to start with this, this, uh, uh, this passage from Jeremiah 17. 
As it says, this is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength, and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert, with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness, in an uninhabited salty land. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord, and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted by a ri- along a riverbank, with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat, or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves are stay green, and they never stop producing fruit. That's our goal, right? I, as, as you can, you know, this is a great time for this verse because we're in a drought, right? If you haven't noticed, uh, it had a little bit of rain in the last couple of days, but as I've noticed, walk, you know, driving around, seeing all the, the, the burn up grass and the burn up corn and dirt, you walk, go along the creeks, the, gr- the trees are still green, right? It's because they're, they're tapped down into the water. And, uh, you know, I think about in this part of the world, buffalo grass, right? I mean, it's resilient, right? It can stand up to a lot of drought and a lot of dry weather. Where other places, grass is kind of, if you don't water it often, it just withers and goes away. Um, I think of the root profile. I did actually learn something at Fort Hayes, okay? Uh, of buffalo grass. Um, but that's where we're at. We want you to connect with God. That's a big thing. And tonight we're going to get together. If you, A lot of people are signed up for Rooted already. If you're not and you want to get in a group, come at 6.30, bring a dessert. Everybody bring a dessert. I said either pie or homemade ice cream or dessert or pie or homemade ice cream. Um, yeah, I said that twice. Um, but uh, we're going to get together and we're going to do this together, okay? And I'm, I'm a child of the 80s, okay? Um, and I told, I told Patrick, I'm going to give a shout out to Connor because Connor knows more about planes uh, than anybody I know. And he would appreciate this. Um, but, I, you know, I, I grew up in an era where we had VHS tapes, okay? And we watched Top Gun because, you know, it was, it was new back then. And uh, I told somebody first service, like, I've been playing, Brooks and I have been playing our 8-bit Nintendo in the basement. I've been playing Tecmo Super Bowl. So like, I feel like I'm 8 again. But he has Joe Montana and Jerry Rice, and I introduced him to Bo Jackson the other day. So he's, you know, first key sweater at. But, um, but I want you to do three things, okay? In, the, in those Top Gun movies, okay, at some point during the movie, that the main character has to engage, right? That's a big thing. He has to engage. And we need to do that. Uh, whether it's, we're going to talk about it later, we're going to engage with the enemy at some point, but we need to engage with God. We need to engage with, with other people. Uh, whether it's in the church or outside the church. Um, and then we need to, to commit to something. I mean, that's a terrible word these days, right? Nobody wants to commit to stuff. Um, but to do this, it, it's going to take a commitment, right? And God's asking us to make commitments in our lives, okay? We, we kind of live in this wishy-washy world right now um, where you, don't, you, don't, you want to say, like, I don't like this or don't like that, or I like this and like that, but we've, we tend to never commit and follow through with anything. And the follow-through is a big deal. We need to follow through after we engage and commit, right? That's even a, that's even a worse word today, okay? We don't want to commit to anything, and then we don't really want to follow it through to the end because it gets messy, and sometimes it's a lot of work. But it's so worth it, especially when we're talking about our faith. Um, and so that's what we're going to do um, through Rooted. And if you're not in Rooted, man, we're going to have some great stuff we're going to bring you every week uh, that Nate's going to bring from the Rooted book. Um, so... The first week we'll meet together tonight, we'll, we'll break out into our groups. If you're not in a group, we'll get you in a group. Briefly talk with each other. Uh, and then you start devotions on Monday, okay? You have five days of devotions. They're like two and a half pages. They're pretty easy, okay? So don't worry about that. And then we'll, you'll meet as a group and talk about that after Nate does a sermon. So the week two, when we get back together, who is God? That's where we're going to start. Um, how does he reveal himself to us? He reveals himself through creation, right? Um, I'm... I'm a, I'm a country kid, okay? I love creation. That's where I see God a lot of times, in the outdoors, right? I see him, I, you know, when I'm out in the middle of nowhere, the grass and the trees and the wind blowing through and animals and sunrises and sunsets and turning cattle out on grass in the spring. And it's just, I see God in creation, but we're, in nature creation, but we're also creation. I see God working through people. Um, so we're going to see that. Remember, we had Creation Truth come in and talk to us, okay? Uh, they're going to be going through some more of that stuff. Like, hey, how did, how did this thing start, right? What's a biblical view of it? Um, he also talks to us through Jesus, okay? That's a big one, right? Remember, Jesus is, is God in human form uh, that came. And remember, everything that Jesus says when he talks to us in Scripture is like God telling you exactly what you're supposed to do or act how you're supposed to act. Um, 
And I, I love this verse, okay? And I just threw this in here. It's in the book, okay? But it's the greatest intro to a book, I think. It's from John 1. It's talking about Jesus. It says, In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to every, everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Boom. I mean, that's big stuff there, okay? Remember that we serve that God, and we get to get to know that God because of what Jesus did on the cross. Um, scripture, okay? Scripture is a, is a big deal, right? Uh, 1 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 says, All Scripture is inspired by God, and it's useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what's right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. It's good. It's, but you know what, guys? It's not just an instruction manual, okay? I just talked about that, you know, it's what, God's, or what Jesus says and what Jesus does is God, right? And I actually listened to the, I, I watched on YouTube. I don't know how in the world I found it. Uh, you know how it is when you get on YouTube and you eventually find stuff. But um, there was an interview that Paul Harvey did with Billy Graham, which is like, I mean, the two of the greatest, like, you know, I don't know, I always like Paul Harvey, the rest of the story. Um, but in this interview, Billy Graham's talking about sometimes a sermon just comes from Scripture. What a, what a novel concept, right? But he said, you know why? This isn't just a book of instruction. This is the living Word of God. And, and whenever you read this and, and you have the Holy Spirit prompting you, it, every time God speaks to you differently through Scripture, right? You wonder why you read it differently whenever you were at one point in your life, or you read it differently now. God's speaking to you through that scripture. You wonder why it's, it, it, it goes, spans generations of people, and it's still here. is because it's living, right? Uh, we're people, and uh, we think that we thought the same for, since the beginning. Um, and God knows how to speak to us because he created us, right? And he's asking us to, to, to speak to us through scripture. Sorry, I get excited about this stuff. Uh, so it says in Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. So get excited because we're going to talk about Scripture. Um, we're also going to talk about how God speaks to us. Okay? How do you pray? How is it that he speaks to us uh, once, once we get to know who he is? We talked about through creation, okay? We won't touch on that again. Remember, Nate's going to go through all these things again. I'm just going to try to touch on all these things. Um, he talks to us through people, right? Uh, our relationships matter the ha that we have with others. We tell God our story uh, through ourselves, right? The one thing, the cool thing about Rooted that I, came, that I, I pulled out of it was God could have done all this without us. He could have come down and he could have saved people himself. He could have uh, wrote this book and just given it to us. But he wrote it through the lives of people that were obedient to him uh, and that fulfilled their purpose, and, uh, which is really exciting, okay? Uh, we tell our story through people. Our relationships are important. Through, the, through our circumstances, you know, I mean, we all go through some, some tough stuff, some good things, some bad things, um, and God speak to us, speaks to us through that. Uh, we open up to what he has when they occur. You know, he, he's going to walk with us through those things, and we're going to learn and we're going to grow. The supernatural, right? We serve a God that surpasses human understanding. How awesome is that? That's big. We've just been talking about these. These things are so exciting, guys, but we, don't, we tend to just kind of not talk about them anymore, right? They're very basic. He talks to us through supernatural means, right? You're, you're, you, have, you have spiritual gifts, okay? And we're going to talk about kind of how we get down the line to those. But they're not just your talents, not just the things you're talented at. God gives you spiritual gifts. Uh, if you, you, you go down the, the, the line far enough in your faith, we'll open those up to help you with other people. Um, read the Bible. I, I'm not giving you guys, you know, level 500 stuff here. Uh, get your nose in the book. If you don't know what it says, you don't know what the truth is. Okay? It, read your Bible. Um, pray. The Holy Spirit's going to talk to you through prayer. Prayer's a big deal. And we're going to have a prayer experience with your group. Uh, 
you pray for it together. Uh, we were like, we got together and we we're like, I don't know how this is going to work. And it was one of the greatest experiences we had. I'd love to do it again. Okay. We prayed as a group together. We prayed individually. We let God just talk to us, um, which was incredible. Okay. Week four. I know I'm going to, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to give you a lot of stuff today, but Nate is going to go back over all this stuff. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to try to get through it for you. Um, week four is the toughest week we'll do, I think. It's where is God in the midst of suffering? There's examples in the Bible of lots of people uh, that have to go through some really tough things. Um, they, they, they talk about David specifically. Um, that in his life, you know, there were some really good times and there were some really tough times. And I think it's interesting as they talk about in here, he goes, back to the, he goes into the cave to get back with God. And after all these things are happening, you read in Psalms. Um, and, and we actually did a men's Bible study last year where they talked about getting back in rhythm with God. And they talked about David going to the cave to get back in rhythm with God. He had to go back and he had to just get back to the basics. He had to get back to who's, who God was and how to talk to him and where he was going to take him next. And some other guys went with him. And then, like they said, when they read the Bible and they got with, back with God, then when they left, they were like, uh, they had like faces like lions and feet like a gazelle. They were super warriors. And uh, I, I would love for that to be where we have, where we have that confidence in the Lord, right? Uh, I don't know if it's true or not because it's not on Facebook, so take it for what it's worth. Uh, but they said Michael Jordan was asked, uh, you know, with his 90s Bulls teams, which I didn't like, by the way, um, would they beat LeBron's Lakers when they were good? And he said, yeah. He said, by how many points? He goes, I don't know, three or four. He's like, three or four, that's it? He goes, yeah, we're almost, all of us are almost 60 now. <laughs> Look, that's, that's confidence, right? We should have that kind of confidence uh, in, our, in our God, right? And then that works through us and to all the people around us as a church family. Okay, God didn't necessarily answer David's prayer the way he wanted it to, but he answered it, right? And he's going to do that in our life. It says, actually in the book here, it says, here's the point. Our hope is not in the fact that God is going to fix every problem we face, in fact, in the way we want. In fact, he really does. The hope is in the knowing that God goes with us through the difficult times and comforts, strengthens, guides, and carries us through. The important thing to know is that uh, in 2 uh, Corinthians 4, 7 through 9, we're the light shining in the hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our, our, our great power is from God, not from ourselves. We are pressed on every side by trouble, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We are knocked down, but we are never destroyed. It goes on in the book to say our hope also comes from knowing that however difficult our circumstances may be, we can still trust God because he's in control. If we ask for hope, we will, he will give it to us. Hope not only in our circumstances, not in other people, not in things ultimately going our way, but hope in our Heavenly Father's whole unfailing love sustains us. The trick is to be transformed to be like Christ in our circumstances, which is a lifelong process, which is, which is great. I mean, I, I don't want to serve a God that I understand all the time and I know everything about. I want to serve one that is higher than me, that, that, that I learn from all the time. All right. Week five, there's an enemy, right? We've gone from the point of, of like, let's talk about who God is. Let's talk about how we talk to him. There's going to be troubles. Now you're in a fight, okay? There's a fight. There's a spiritual fight going on for your very soul and the souls of people around you. Um, this is not an equal fight, okay? God's the winner. We forget that, okay? This is not... Satan and God are equal. It's creator versus created. And uh, I always equate it, and these guys have heard me say this a hundred times, it's not the 72 dolphins versus 72 dolphins, okay? And I used to say the 95 Huskers versus the 95 Huskers, but we don't talk about Nebraska anymore. Um, <laughs> so so that's, a different, that's a different sermon. Um, but it says in here, it says, one of the primary solutions Scripture gives to the problem of why bad things happen to good people is that we're in a war zone, okay? We're in the middle of a spiritual fight. But remember, and I, 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 I capitalized all this, be assured God's promises still hold, okay? Remember in the fight, God's going to be with you and, and that he's, he's going he's to be with you the whole time through this fight, okay? And I, honestly, I'm going to talk about it in a minute, but your, your testimony, some people don't want to give their testimony or their story, but until you do, you realize that God is with you your whole life whether you were paying attention or not. Um. You need to be prepared for the fight. And I'm not going to go through all these because Nate's going to talk about each one of these. Remember Ephesians 6, 
These are all the things that you need to put on. You guys can see all those things, right? And I'm not, not going to go through and read them either. Uh, but remember in Ephesians 6, our fight is not against flesh and blood, okay? In a human world, we want to fight with each other. It's that person, this person did that, this person. We've got to remember that if we're in the right place with God, that it's a spiritual fight, and we're fighting evil, right? We're not fighting the person next to us or the person that makes us mad on Facebook. Um, strongholds is a big deal, okay, that we're going to talk about in that week. We all have these sinful strongholds in our lives uh, that keep us from a relationship with the Lord and keep us from a relationship with the Holy Spirit and ultimately from what our spiritual gifts are. Okay? And your spiritual gifts are things that God gives you, and, and Nate will talk about that uh, from Scripture, that are things to further the kingdom. And when you have those sinful strongholds, you can't get past those, right? And you need God's help. I, I had a lot of those in my life I had to get rid of, and I couldn't do it myself. I had to ask God to keep molding me, okay? I sit, come in here. I come in here and pray in the mornings when I'm here because the sunlight comes through, and it's right down through here, and I'm by myself. And there's things I ask God, I'm like, God, I need you to, to change this about me because what this, whatever it is that this part of my life, it, it's hindering my ability to be more of a leader in the kingdom. And so I need you to mold me. I'm not, it's not just like, well, this is who I am, God. You know, take it or leave it. I want to be molded. And I feel like that's the way we should be with the Lord. Um, don't just say no to sin. Say yes to the spirit that lives within you, okay? We're going to go on from that. Then what do you do? You serve after you figure all that stuff out, right? You figure out a place to serve. Um, you know, Jesus talks about not just salvation, but restoration of people, okay? And, uh, and I, didn't, I didn't write all of this down in my notes here, so I'm going to read it back here because I can't see. Uh, this is how you make the most of your life. You serve. So Jesus called all of his disciples together. You know that the rulers of this world lorded over the pe- their people, and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be a servant. And whoever wants to be first among you, you must be the slave of everyone else. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Remember that. Remember who we taught us that Jesus was, right? I mean, it's God here on earth. But what did he do when he came here? I'm so interested in seeing what, how Jesus reacts to people or what he says or what he does, because that's what God's telling me to do. Um, remember that God works... In this way, he blesses people that become channels of blessings to others. Um, in the Great Commission, he talks about this, right? He came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this, I am with you even to the end of the age. He's going to go with us in this. But we, we, have a, we have a mission here, okay? And I mean, we can go through this whole life and just do different things all the time that don't really matter. Or we can, we, we can get on board with the Lord and figure out what it is you're supposed to be doing in this life. Don't you want to do that? I mean, I don't know why we mess around doing anything else. I know why, because I'm human and I do those things too, okay? Um, there's a story they talk about in here called, there's an elephant and a mouse cross a bridge. And they cross the bridge and the mouse goes, man, we really shook that thing. And uh, that's kind of the way we are with the Holy Spirit, right? We take the Holy Spirit with us in the things we do, and it, it, it shakes the ground. And maybe it's just through us that we're part of that process, okay? Um, they say in the book, our talents and abilities and personality traits are natural human resources everyone has. These are not the same as spiritual gifts. I said that before. Uh, which are given by sovereign choice by the Holy Spirit. At the same time, we become uh, Christ followers, okay? And remember that all spirit empowered ministry to bear fruit okay we're talking about rooted we're talking about trees remember that we're going to we can tell whether something's uh, false teaching or true teaching or false ministry or true true teaching by the fruit you can see the fruit by which uh, comes out of those ministries Um, we're going to serve together faith in action is i forget the date it's like october 16th yeah uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we do that every year, but we're going to do it with our groups this time, okay? Because this is part of the serve experience. Um, we, uh, we're going to go out with our groups, and we're going to have a service project. I, we worked with a group in uh, church in Texas. They actually had to hire somebody on staff because people, after they did service projects, enjoyed it so much that now they're doing more of them. Um, and so that'll be a lot of fun, okay? Um, the next part is action. There's got to be action to our faith, Okay? Uh, Matthew 25 always gets me, okay? 
I check myself on Matthew 25 a lot. And not because um, I am, you know, like to pick on myself or I like, you know, but it's because I need to check where I'm at. So he takes, and, you know, it's judgment. He takes people and puts them in the sheep and the goats, right? And uh, the sheep are on the right and the goats are on the left. And he says, then the king will say to these on the, oh, did I have it on there? Did I have it on there? Okay. I'm where I'm supposed to be. Then the king will say to those on the right, Come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you for the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then he goes on to tell the goats that you didn't do any of those things. And uh, you know what? There's some words in there. You fed, you gave, you invited, you cared, you visited. Those are relational words, okay? Those are things you can't do from a far distance away from people. And God is a relational God, okay? If you read Scripture and understand that the very nature of God and the way He wants us to be, that's how He expects us to be, right? It's not just, you know, come and, and, and feed yourself. It's you've got to go out and have action to it uh, because it helps other people. Um, you've got to have compassion for people. Uh, also, receive compassion well. Have compassion for people not only out in the lost world, but in your church. Um, I'm not going to get into the. I'm, I'm trying to speed things along here a little bit. Uh, but the last paragraph on page 146 talks about when you start figuring out people's stories and you start living life with them and you start serving with them, it becomes more about uh, just serving with friends. And it becomes really enjoyable. I mean, that's kind of how God uh, envisions uh, believers doing things together. Um, it says, Christian maturity begins to grow... When you can sense your concern for others outweighs your concern for yourself. A way of honoring others is to serve others. Okay? We're going to be getting into all this stuff. There's action to it, okay? Um, and it's totally worth it. Okay. In week eight, we're going to get back together, all the groups. Uh, there's a talk about how um, God views money, okay? So Jesus taught about money uh, more than prayer and faith because he knew that we were going to have issues with money. Okay, we're going to have issues with pride. We're going to have to have choices be made uh, when there's a monetary thing involved, right? Um, and so he talks about that. And we're, Nate's also going to talk about, you know, it's, it's called sacrificial generosity. It's not just your money. It's your time. It's your, your talents, uh, what you do with it. Um, and, and honestly, we talk about, too, giving back, you know, giving back a portion. But God owns all of it. We're just investing back in the kingdom. Um, and we're going to talk about uh, the week when when um, we talk about the, the financial things, biblical finances. Um, but remember, uh, it, actually, I'll, I'll tell this. I was going to cut this out, but uh, they say, who's, you know, you can, be, you can be not content or content at any income level. You can be happy and have no money, and you can be not happy and have a lot of money, or vice versa. It, asks, it, it poses a question that says, uh, there's a man with five kids, and there's a man with five million dollars. Who's more content? It's a man with five kids because he doesn't want any more kids. <laughs> but that's just a way of looking at it, right? Uh, but remember in Matthew 6.20 that you're storing up your treasures in heaven, okay? It's a relational thing, okay? It's other people. It's, it's being godly with the things that you're given. Um, and uh, remember that it's not just all here, okay? There's, there's a reward uh, in heaven for us, okay? For, for being... Uh, uh, intentional and having re a relation with God, relationship with God and with other people and getting people there, okay? That's the thing I'm most looking forward to is other than seeing Jesus is seeing the people that are like, hey, because you took the time to do what God asked you to, um, I found the Lord and I'm here. And I appreciate that. Okay. Um, why, and sh why and how should I tell others? Um, this is week nine. We're almost done, okay? Um, why is it that we don't? A lot of times we have these, these fears that we have listed here, right? Of rejection, awkwardness, anxiety about who, what were they going to ask me? I'm too busy. Maybe my life isn't where I want it to be right now. So, you know, maybe they shouldn't be looking at me. Uh, but remember, we're, we're all that way, okay? But if we, we, put, uh, we put our trust in the Lord and we go along this path, like, he's going to prompt us to start doing these things. And uh, it's important because, whoops, I need to go back, don't I? Where is that? Okay, he talks about this. You're the salt of the earth. Um, and I'm not going to read through this, okay? Um, but I want to tell you that 
is important because it says salt only is potent when it actually comes into contact with what it's preserving or healing, okay? And God makes us the salt of the earth, right? We're the thing, uh, we're the people in, in, on, on earth that are supposed to go tell other people and, and, and get people to a relationship with him. Uh, because what we talked about before, it's, it's a gift, right? That he goes through us. Um, and remember that uh, you're strategically placed, okay? People in the Bible, you wonder, like, why is this person in prison for 10 years? Or why is this person here or there? But they made an impact on somebody in the Bible because they were at that place in that certain time, right? Um, and you're the same way. Um, you're not, it's not, a, not random where you're at. God's, you're going to be telling God's story, uh, and Nate will go through all that, okay? We're going to, the beginning, you talk about, hey, this is, this is what God says about how all this came to be, right? And then you tell your story. Uh, it's important to do that. Um, and I know some people have said, well, I don't want to do Rudy because I don't want to have to tell my story or tell my testimony. And honestly, I understand that, okay? I don't like talking about my story. I'm going to do it a little bit today because I'm going to take the fear away from you a little bit of doing that. I'll be, do it briefly, okay? Um, but, you know, Paul's a great example in the Bible. They tell the story of before him, where he's a Christian, his commitment, and what he did afterwards, right? Um, and so... Um, I'm going to go through just, just briefly um, for you. Uh, as you're talking about September 11th, okay? And that's where I'm going to start. I'm not going to start like, it was an August day in 1983. Um, but uh, September 11th, 2001, okay? I'm a senior in high school, and I'm sitting at my kitchen table in Hayes, Kansas. I'm homesick with mono doing government homework, and I didn't get it the way you all think I did, okay? Um, <laughs> I was, I was uh, playing football, and I was uh, going to high school rodeos on the weekend, and I was bulldogging, and I hit at Hill City, and I hit the ground super hard, and I got this hip pointer. I guess if you ever had one of those, it's like a giant bruise on your hip, and it's a long story, but they said my body kind of, whatever, deteriorated until I got this sickness, and so I watched the events by myself at the table, and it was, uh, it was a tough day, and it was a tough time in my life, right? This is actually what I wanted to be doing at that time, okay? Okay. Um, I love playing football, but I tore up my knee my junior year, and I got sick my senior year, and I was mad. I was really mad at God, and I was mad at the things going on in the world, and I'm like, you know what, God, I believe in you, but I'm going to check out for a while. I'm going to do my own thing, and, you know, you don't seem to care what I'm doing, and so I did for a long time, and I'm going to tell you, I got in a bad place, and I did a lot of things that I'm not proud of, and uh, my life was in a terrible spot. And I ended up in Colorado, actually, with a really good job, and I hit rock bottom. And I told God, I thought, finally, I'm like, hey, I'll do whatever it is you want me to do. Okay, I, I cannot, I, I hit the end of my rope, I'm done. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm in Norton, Kansas. And I'm like, okay, let's do that again. Um, but I love it here. And, uh, like, he put me in this place. It's not random. And then all of a sudden, like, I meet this girl. And, uh, and she's, she's my rock. You know, I mean, I, I love my wife to death and our kids. And that's, that was our first family picture. That's my devil dog. Um, Andrea still hates that dog. Uh, she's old enough that now when she runs, she kind of veers off to the left all the time. Uh, yeah. But, but we met and we got married and stuff still wasn't right in our lives. And so we're like, you know, there's something missing here. And, and we start coming to church here. We weren't going to church very much. Uh, we really didn't get it yet. And so these guys, Phil and Lucas, start talking to me about men's encounter. And I'm like, I guess I'll go. I want to make some friends. And I knew something had to change. So I go, and man, God changed my life there, okay? He spoke to me there. Um, not, not verbally, but it was like this moment where it was like, I felt this, these words saying, someday you're going to teach and someday you're going to preach. And I said, nope. I said, I don't get up. If I got up here 10 years ago, I couldn't tell you my name. I'd be so nervous, okay? But I've, I followed through, okay? And this was because God prompted me. And, and I started helping with the youth. And the first week, I wanted to quit. And the second week, I wanted to quit. I tell Ty Burns this all the time. I wanted to quit because of you so many times. But I love you. I love you. Uh, but I did that for like seven years, and I learned from Paul. And so many people in this church poured into our lives, okay? Yesterday, I was thinking about Mark Crable. You know, I wish he was still here. Because I love Mark. And Mark was one of those guys that helped me um, in those days. And Alan and and other people, and Garrett, and uh, man, there's so many people that pour into you in your church, okay? That's where we're at today. I, I can't believe I'm doing what I'm doing. I, 
God put me now in a place where I'm, 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 uh, I'm doing something I never thought I'd do, okay? I have my 20th high school reunion on the 8th. I'm not going, by the way. I'm in, I'm in Arkansas. Some people have been, been fit messaging me on Facebook about it. I'm like, you guys look really old. Uh, but I don't look that old. Um, but, you know, they're like, I, they would have never, I would have never guessed in high school that I would have stood up. But this is, this is the most important thing in the world I can do. Um, and so I'm doing it. I'm going to grad school. And I got in a car and I went to Joplin in the middle of the afternoon on Sunday a few weeks ago. And I'm like, I'm all alone. And I hate this and I don't want to do it. And I listen to the radio and I'm listening to Christian stuff. And three times I hear the story of Joshua sending, uh, said, God says, I'm going to give you this land, but you've got to send some people out and look at all the, the hurdles and all the circumstances and all the things in your way and then decide whether I'm, you're going to do it or not. I thought, mm, that's pretty good. Um, so that's where we're at. I'm, just do the things that God's asking you to do, okay? Uh, I, I am, look, we're, we, uh, we're just so blessed in this community, Okay? Um, the important thing is, is why is because we're family here, okay? We're family in this church. And uh, we do these things together, right? You make an impact on the people around you. You're not randomly placed, okay? But you've got to get right with God and do the things you've got to do to commit uh, to Him. Um, we're going to worship together. We talk about worship. We're going to do baptisms and communion together, okay? Uh, those are two big things, right? Um, they finish out here, okay? I'm going to give you a challenge, okay? This is the last picture I'm going to give you, okay? I told you I was a bulldogger, and I don't know whether I caught or crashed here. I crashed more than I caught, okay? This is a Phillipsburg rodeo. Um, but I don't know why I, was, I hadn't thought of this in years. But we used to go practice in Salina at this guy named Mont Elam's pen. And uh, people, a lot of guys would go practice there, and he would run steers for you all day long. But he had a rule. He said at the end of the pen, and, and please don't misconstrue what I'm saying here, okay? Because um, I'm going to explain it in a minute. At the end of the pen, there was a sign that said, get down or get out, which meant that you get down on your steer or don't come practice here. And what he meant was there's people all around there, and everybody was treated the same around there. You know, there's people hanging out. Actually, one time this little dog came and was nipping at this steer's heels while this one guy was trying to throw it. It's hilarious. Uh, but he said, once you step in that arena, that I want you to do three things. I want you to engage in what you're doing. I want you to commit, make a commitment once you're back in that box to do what you're going to do and follow through. I want you to do what I ask you to do. And I know it's going to be hard and sometimes you're going to crash and burn and you're not going to know what you're doing, but God's asking you to do these things in your life. And church is time as a collective unit and as individuals to start doing the things that God's asking us to do and do these three things, okay? We can't just be these people that just go through life and, and never make an impact, Okay? I believe too much in this church and these people, you, you people in here, um, that we're, we're, better, we're better than that because we serve a God that is that way. So, church, I'm excited, okay? Come tonight if you want to. Come join it. Get it. Step out of your comfort zone. Let's do this thing, okay? Let's do it with others. Let's do it with God, okay? And, and today, I'm going to pray for you in just a minute. But today, if, if you want to make that decision, you're like, you know what? I, I'm tired of the status quo of this life, okay? I'm just tired of doing what I'm doing. And, and I really, I'm going to chase after God. I'm just going to do it. Let us know. We want to pray for you, okay? We want to do this with you. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful uh, that you, you are a God that uh, is sovereign and uh, is all-knowing and all-loving. And Lord, that you speak through us and you allow us to be... Uh, to be uh, your servants here, and uh, just uh, that uh, in our church, Lord, I just, I pray for everybody that's here, that, Lord, you just grab a hold of their heart, and you just say, you're mine, and that I want you to, I want you to engage with me. I want you to, to commit to things that I'm doing. I want you to, I want you to follow through with this faith and this, this path that I've laid out for you, because it's fulfilling, and because it's, uh, it's fulfilling because it helps you and helps other people, and ultimately, um, it gives credence and respect to you, Lord. Um, Lord, I'm so thankful for this church, thankful for this community, and uh, Lord, just bless us in our day. We ask those things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. I
This is the Norris family. They've been coming for quite a while. And uh, June the 6th. When, when did you lose your son? 11th. 11th. Okay. I was, my, lost my sister on that. Yeah. It was the same timing. Uh, he lost his son. But uh, the church gathered around him and stuff. And then we got the, they started talking about what do we do to join the church. And I said, well, my yard needs mowed. And uh, peach cobbler a week. No. And uh uh, they fit right in here, and uh, we love the Norris family, and um, they wanted to place their membership with us and be part of our family, and uh, we're going to welcome them today. Both of them have already been immersed into Christ, and so they are now part of your brothers and sisters in Christ. So, um, uh, yard still needs mowed, just didn't know yet. So, but uh, we're going to let them sneak to the back. Before we do that, would a couple elders come over and pray over them? Uh, you know, loss of a son is still tough. And so uh, uh, that's something you battle constantly. So if I could have a couple of our elders come up and, and pray. I think, there we go. I think they already went downstairs to lunch. So maybe, there we go. So all right, we're going to do that and then uh, we'll dismiss that. Father God, Lord, we... Uh... We come to you today, Lord, and we just uh, thank you for this morning. We thank you for the Norrises, Lord, and we just uh, we just want them to know that we're behind them 100%, and we're here for them all the time, Lord, and, and we know that you too lost a son, but it was for the glory of all of us, Lord, and we just uh, thank you for that. We ask you to give them strength as they go through these times. There's going to be good times. There's going to be bad times, but they have us here for them anytime they need. Father God, now we go out into the world and we, we, we share your word, Lord, and we just uh, lead God and direct us the rest of this week. We love you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Welcome to the family. Amen. Amen. Don't forget we have a potluck today. And Brad's going to let the, the good-looking ones go first, right? Me. You'll lead the way. All right, go on downstairs for the potluck. All right. Jesus is my Savior. I shall not be moved. In His love and favor, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree. That's where the Bible waters. I shall not Well, I shall not be, I shall not be moved, I shall not be, I shall not be moved, just like a tree that's planted by the waters, but I shall not be moved, just like a tree that's planted by the Praise God.